What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm bringing you my full review of the 2012 Retina Display MacBook Pro. Let's take a quick break and get started. What's up guys, welcome back. Now I've had a little bit over a week to get better acquainted with Apple's next generation in mobile powerhouse laptops. And yes, of course, I'm talking about the 2012 15-inch Retina Display MacBook Pro. So let's get to my thorough opinion overall verdict. Now first, let's talk about the Retina Display. Apple first patented the term Retina Display when they first introduced it in the iPhone and have since been able to transfer their amazing dots per square inch over to the laptop that's state-of-the-art in my opinion. The resolution on this amazing Retina Display is 2880 by 1800 and it's truly amazing when viewing in person and in my opinion is one of the best if not the best displays that I have ever seen. Now Apple does use IPS technology in their displays which is going to give you a very uh, good amount of viewing angles which is important on a laptop as well as very vibrant colors which is very important as well. Now I honestly have no complaints about this Retina display. Um, it has uh, taken over my 27 inch iMac as my uh, new work machine. Now let's talk about the form factor. The all new form factor is absolutely brilliant and is especially evident upon comparison of the non-retina form factor compared to the all new model. Now the MacBook Pro becomes something you would want to travel with rather than just keep on your desk. Now to be exact the older MacBook Pro was around an inch thick and about 5.5 pounds. The new Retina model is a full pound lighter at 4.4 pounds and is only 0.71 inches thick, making it the thinnest laptop currently available. Let's go ahead and talk about performance. Now, the performance of this base model Retina MacBook Pro has been just brilliant. When it comes to everyday tasks that I do such as browsing the internet, checking email, 1080p HD YouTube video playback, and strenuous video editing in Final Cut Pro 10 and iMovie has been perfect, no problems, and actually performed quite excellent in my opinion. Now gaming is uh, something that I don't do too much on my Mac, but I did want to test it out for uh, just benchmark purposes. Now um, let's quickly touch basis on that. I don't uh, game much. Once again, I do use a PS3 and an Xbox 360 for that, but Apple has definitely stepped up their internals, uh, paving the way for great gaming on this device such as their dedicated one uh, gigabyte of GPU included in this Retina model as well as the i7 processor with turbo boost speeds and 8 gigs of RAM standard. Now I did play Rage and Bioshock 2 at full resolution which is 2880 by 1800 and the laptop handled just fine and in fact handled very excellent. No fan kicked on whatsoever and if it did I didn't even notice that it was on. Next, let's talk about battery life. If you're doing medium and even heavy work, you can expect to get around 24 hours of battery life, which is excellent for a laptop of this power as well as this thinness. Now, let's touch base this quickly on the new ventilation system. Apple's MacBook Pro has always been plagued with heat issues as well as fan noise issues. Now in this new Retina model, I would have to say that in my opinion, Apple was exactly right when saying that they did uh, solve the heat issue as well as the excessive noise uh, coming from the fan area. Now, uh, the last thing that I would like to touch basis on, and that is just my verdict and overall opinion, whether you guys should get this product. Now, in my opinion, this laptop, of course, isn't for everyone. Their budget has to suit this laptop, seeing that the entry level model starts off at $2,100, close to $2,200. So, in my opinion, um, is it really worth the money? Now, it comes down to whether you have the money to buy it. If you're looking for just a single unit to keep as a work machine, I would say get the 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro, get it spec'd out to a higher or a medium grade at least processor as well as getting 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now if you're looking for something to just browse the internet with I would say go with a MacBook Air and save yourself at least a grand. That's going to wrap it up for me guys. I hope this helped influence you whether or not to purchase a 15 inch Retina Display MacBook Pro. I will be giving away a 15 inch Retina Display MacBook Pro very soon. 
Also, guys, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please feel free to do so. Please browse around some more videos, and I will catch you around the channel.